This is uh, Cesare Fracassi. I am an associate professor of finance at the McComb School of Business. I'm also the uh, director of the blockchain initiative at Texas McComb. And uh, today we have uh, here with us uh, Amin uh, Shams. He is a PhD student in finance and uh, an expert on cryptocurrency. Uh, Amin and uh, John Griffin, also a professor of finance and uh, uh, faculty advisor for the blockchain initiative. They just uh, uh, released a new paper called uh, Is uh, Bitcoin Untethered? And uh, Amin is here today to talk about, uh, about this. So before we talk about uh, the paper, uh, the paper is going to talk about the relationship between Tether and Bitcoin. Everybody nowadays knows what Bitcoin is, uh, but uh, not many people know what Tether is. So can you first tell us what Tether is? Mm, yes, uh, Tether is a digital currency peg to US dollar, uh, which has uh, both the stability of a fiat currency and also the flexibility of a digital currency. And uh, the idea behind Tether is interesting as a facilitator of demand from uh, investors who own fiat currencies, but it could also be harmful to the market if it's overprinted and uh, because it can create uh, an inflationary effect uh, like uh, the effect of overprinting money uh, which can push the price of bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies up so how do uh, so who owns tether uh, tether is issued by tether limited which has uh, a lot of ties with bitfinex Mm -hmm. uh, which is a major cryptocurrency exchange. And so you said that they have a pegged uh, uh, value between one tether dollar, one tether US tether, and one US dollar. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, who checks that they actually have a one to one uh, uh, back between US dollar and tethers? Uh, so it's, uh, we don't actually see uh, many evidence of that backing. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was a couple of bank statements issued uh, in early 2017, but after that, there's a lack of reliable accounting statement on whether Tether, ba uh, tether is backed by dollar or not. So we don't know if, uh, if there is a one-to-one -one mm, bank. We don't know. We that. just have yeah. to trust them. Uh, we have to trust them. Which is interesting because the whole idea of blockchain technology is to create a system where trust is not needed where everything is, uh, is, is checked and double checked by a, a, a set of uh, no net network nodes. Uh, but now here we actually have to trust that Tether actually is backed one to one uh, with, with US dollars. Yes. That's, yes. that's interesting. So let's start talking about your paper. So what do you find right. in your paper? Uh, we, we are interested in uh, studying the price run up of Bitcoin in 2017. And uh, we study the transactions on Bitcoin and Tether blockchain and we find transactions with very specific patterns that seem to influence price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. For example, uh, we see that these transactions induce an asymmetric serial correlation in Bitcoin prices. Uh, whenever Bitcoin prices go down, we see that it's followed uh, by a very sizable price reversal. Mm -hmm. But only when prices go down and uh, only after, uh, during the time that Tether is uh, actively printed. So Tether or, prints money and the price of Bitcoin goes up? Uh, not exactly like that. Okay. Uh, we actually, uh, we are interested to find the exact time that Tether is exchanged for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. That's why we analyze Bitcoin and Tether blockchain and we match these two uh, blockchains and we can show when Tether goes and Bitcoin goes back at the same time. So uh, at the time of these uh, exact transactions, we can see that there's a price effect, which is usually following printing Tether, but not exactly at the same time. I see. So, so you basically find evidence suggestive uh, manipulation of, uh, of Bitcoin prices? Uh, we find evidence consistent with uh, price influences. For example, uh, we see that around run number price thresholds of Bitcoin, we see activities uh, consistent with creating a price support. Okay. So if you want to, if you have an incentive uh, for the prices to uh, n not go too, uh, too low, you want to create a price support uh, at certain thresholds that people use for price anchoring. Uh, one of them could be a run number of price thresholds and we see a significant uh, support there. And the effect is uh, very large uh, at the aggregate level. If we uh, remove less than 1% of hours 
following uh, large trends, uh, large uh, activities of like this. Uh, the buy and hold return of Bitcoin uh, from March 2017 to March 2018 goes down uh, to half. To half. Is, so the yeah. value of uh, Bitcoin should be less than half than what it is today? Uh, it's very hard to talk about the counterfactual, what uh -huh. the price should be. Okay. Uh, because we don't know when, uh, when prices are pushed up, uh, whether, uh, so prices went up to $20,000 and now prices are $6,000. Mm -hmm. Whether price is corrected or not, uh, we don't know. And given that there is no clear fundamental in the market and there's no cash flow and we don't have a good model of pricing Bitcoin, I can't tell uh, whether the price should be like half today or not. I see. Is uh, Tether still printing uh, Tether uh, uh, coins? Tether was actively printing up to late January 2018. Which, is, which was the peak of the, of the price. The peak mm -hmm. of the price was in December. In December. Uh, but they, they issued a lot up to December, but they kept uh, issuing also a lot more uh, until January. But then after that, like, the market cap of Tether was 2.3 billion. Uh, yeah. by the end of January, I guess, 2.2 or 2.3 billion. After that, uh, it went up by like 200 million. So, so they, why they stop? Um, I'm not sure. It could be related to a subpoena issued by CFTC. Like there was a public announcement of uh, CFTC subpoena by the end, uh, around uh, the end of January. And it could be a coincidence or uh, they just stopped uh, printing Tether after. And that. it's interesting that when they stopped printing Tether, the price of Bitcoin collapsed uh, all the way down to $6,000 a day. Mm, yes. It's an inter uh, interesting correlation. Uh, it's interesting released. correlation, yes. <laughs> so when did you release the paper? Uh, we released it yesterday, uh, June 13. Okay, so, so what happened to the price of Bitcoin when you... This is, this is a paper that actually got a lot of visibility in the news. It was commented in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and many, many outlets. Uh, wh what happened to the price of Bitcoin on that day? Mm, price went down by almost 4%, I think. So 4%, the market, market value of uh, Bitcoin is about $100 billion. So you're basically responsible of, of wiping off uh, $4 billion of wealth from uh, crypto investors. Mm, so first of all, it, it's hard to tell because pr prices fluctuate a lot. And whether it was because of releasing our paper or there was other reasons or there was a selling pressure in the market, uh, it's hard to tell. But I think uh, in general, our paper or other uh, research of this type uh, could be very beneficial uh, to the market in the long run. Because uh, investors need to trust uh, the market and uh, for the market to grow naturally, uh, it needs integrity. So this kind of research and uh, an open discussion about these issues, I think would be very beneficial uh, for the market and for uh, crypto investors in the long run. Okay. So uh, thank you so much, Amin. And uh, we are looking forward to also see your next paper on Bitcoin. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me.